Day one of the transfer portal for the spring cycle is in the books for Michigan State football. Also, of course, we're going to talk about Michigan State basketball in their offseason, but not just me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. We got who? Mike Jones of Can't Read, Can't Write. <laughs> Looking forward to this one. Let's go. You are locked on Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right. Still rocking with the new music. But first, guys, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. And you might be able to tell I've got a little bit of a chipper tone in my voice because we are joined by one third of my favorite podcasts out there. And I'm not blowing sunshine up this, guys. You know why. Like <laughs> The folks that can't read, can't write, deliver some of the greatest laughs that you could possibly find, not just in the Michigan State podcasting scape, but just the podcasting scape in general. I'll let you talk finally, Mike. How on earth are you doing, man? How did day one of the spring transfer portal window treat you? Are you just spinning around in circles right now? Well, I want to get to that. But first, I want to celebrate okay. you in the Locked On Network. Wow. You wow. finally gave that poor woman a chance to yeah. listen to some different music because I choose yes. to believe she in <laughs> yes. a world where she is literally reading that every episode <laughs> for every Locked On podcast. So yeah. I just want to celebrate you, the Locked On Network. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And, and you <laughs> yes. were way too kind about our podcast. But uh, look, I remembered who Braden Miller is today. And so that is there a thing go. to celebrate. Um, On that note, Braden Miller, offensive lineman, spent two years yeah. here. He announces his intentions to go in the transfer portal. Now it's open for 15 days. It's a 15-day window when guys can declare that they want to go into the transfer portal. They don't have to find their new school in the next 15 days. But alas, here we are. That was the news for day one. Is a two-year guy that played in three games. He's out, probably saw the log jam ahead of him. I mean, whether it was going to be a tackle position because, I mean, those are already two highly contested battles. Nevertheless, he's on to hopefully greener pastures in his career. So with that said... Mike, um, let's just do this. Uh, 10 guys that you also want to see transfer this offseason. Can you name? No, I'm kidding. We're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> that would be the meanest. I, I, I could go through the, are we concluding the basketball roster on this one? <laughs> <laughs> After that. Yeah, you sure. We'll hammer on all sports. We'll, we'll pick and prod the tennis program, the wrestling team. we got something to say about. But no, let's keep it with the offensive line right now because – I want to feel confident about them going into the offseason because they, they are going to be a key cog in this machine, if not the key cog here. The run game needs support. Aiden Childs needs to stay healthy. You do have names. Luke Newman, Tanner Miller, two transfers coming in. You got returners, Geno Vandermark, Brandon Baldwin, Ethan Boyd. Is there something there, though? Like, Do, do you think we could be excited about the offensive line here, or is this truly the epitome of – Hold your horses, Buckaroo. We just got to wait and see on this one. Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's worth breaking that down in a couple ways. First, okay, the 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 offensive line under the previous regime was not bad at pass pro. So in terms yeah. of keeping Aiden Childs upright, it, with it, particularly with a mobile quarterback, like I, I think there's a reason to be optimistic there. The the bad news is that they were bad at running the ball and they've now switched schemes entirely moving from an inside zone run scheme to an outside run scheme. Uh, and we heard uh, Brian Lindgren say specifically that that wasn't going great. Uh, so I don't know that it's going to get better. And, and I will say also that the outside zone scheme is and I'm sure there are people way more qualified than me to back me up mm -hmm. on this, uh, but is a different skill set entirely. The ability to get lateral has a, a lot more value than an inside run, uh, zone run scheme. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. I will say that some of the names coming in, to your point, uh, the the transfers, but also some of the depth pieces that we had reasons to be optimistic about, like. 
I've got complaints about Coach Cap, but he was bringing in some four stars. So yeah, I don't know totally. that it's better this year, but I guess it can't get worse, right? Like that's kind of where I'm at worse? too, right? I mean, the only way to go is up. What was it? Two point four yards per carry last year. And I know it's not like the end all be all stat for rushing, but like it certainly paints a great picture. And it also unfortunately matched the eye test last year. It did look that bad yeah. last season. I mean, that's that's not a number you're wondering, huh? How to get that bad? Like, no, 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 no. If you just watched even two quarters of MSU football last year, um, yeah, because it was that's three point, like. If you were at three point, if you were at three point four yards per carry, you would still describe that as not great. You get you asked, probably asked, can tack up. Right. Yeah, you could probably throw up another ten points per game. If you were at 3.4 yards per carry, like sustained drive. Yeah. Not not be in the bottom like, five for time of possession for the last two or if not, if not three seasons. Oh my. Oh, oh, look at us go with a smooth little three and a half yards per carry. That would uh pay dividends here. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be okay. Yeah. So to answer your question, I, I, I think there's reasons to have healthy skepticism. You, like, okay. There's no like reason that. to not have a prove it attitude. Yeah. But it's also fair to say that that Oregon State was able to scheme up a a successful run game with a theoretically less touted line than what we have. I think it's fair. So I think it's tremendously fair. Yeah. Because yeah, if there was one thing that you know Jonathan Smith had the knock of as he came in here, said, well, he didn't really have recruiting classes that were higher than 40th in the country, if not even 50th in the country, which of course not. I was coaching Corvallis, Oregon. I mean, yeah, excuse the guy for not having, you know, dynamite blue chip studded classes. But this is also what, like, maybe this tells me the, the, the kind of a person who I am, Mike, because I, we've been hearing whispers, if not shouts, out of what has happened in scrimmages or practices that the defensive line is looking really, really, really good so far. And, hey, great, Simeon Barrow, Derek Harmon. You guys know those names. Daquan Dows, the transfer out of Georgia Tech. Sure, you, know, you guys know the hits. But uh, can it really be that good? Like, I know these guys are good players, but um, something's got to give with the offensive liner. So that, that's just why I just have a little bit of, just like you said, uh, maybe it's not even healthy in this sense, just skepticism right now because we've talked up yeah. and down again. This is the number one key going into the season. The offensive line has to be adequate. I'm not even looking for, like, Top three in the Big Ten. We're just looking for just beef, be fine, <laughs> because that's all we need. But um, yeah. Sorry to you know kind of just turn the Brandon Miller transfer thing into like, hey, let's talk about how I don't trust this offensive line yet. But um, I guess I'm just going to be talking to people like you, Mike, until I hear otherwise of why I should believe. <laughs> Isn't that healthy? <laughs> well, we're no, we're we're big on. We talk about this on the pod all the time. Uh, when people show you who they are, believe them. And at this yeah. point in time the offensive line hasn't shown you any reason. And I, I'd love to come on here and provide better content that is like rah, 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 head in the spring game. But we do that enough. Come on. We're, we're not going to find out in the spring game either. And uh, no, 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 and no, no, no. The, the, <laughs> right. And yeah, you can say all of you want about the defensive line, but like what offensive line are they going up against? Right. Hey. I'm knocking everybody. Oh my God. Oh my God. Help With me. That save said, me. Save me. You know what? I will save you because look, we're going to dip into a break here in a hot second, but like, look, all that to say, I, like, I, I still think, and this has been my expectation so far. Like I, I want to just make that crystal clear. That I think seven and five is where MSU is next year. Like I'm, I'm not projecting like a new year's six bowl game. I'm not calling, Hey, we're going to go to the rally request bowl as a nine and three team. Like no, no, for me, seven and five is the sweet spot for Michigan state here. So even as I talk about the offensive line, like I, I still think that that is very attainable. The over-under is five and a half for a reason. And yes, Vegas has been wrong. They were very wrong in 2021 as it pertains to Michigan State. But still, it, we just did that rah rah show that you were talking about, Mike, a few days ago. 20 reasons to get fired up for the football season coming up. But um, I just like, excuse me for pumping the brakes after I, we're going up on well three years, or if not four years under Mel Tucker with uh, inadequate offensive line play. I, it, it really matters in college football. I know that's groundbreaking analysis there, but um, yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was just worth spending some airtime just talking about what 
let's look at where like some maybe issues are as we go into portal season, perhaps, or in the last week of spring football. So that that's all. Sorry to bring a little forecast to rain on everyone's parade here, but that's that's just um how we did it. Actually, if you want to blame someone, blame Braden Miller. He's an offensive lineman. He kind of just put us on the topic. So how about that as his last act as a yeah. Spartan? Now we don't have him. I know. When in doubt, Mike, blame the children. That's right. Blame the hardworking student athletes. <laughs> and that is what we did right here. All right. So what me and Mike do, we watch a lot of press conference scrums on YouTube. The fine media contingent of Michigan State. They bring you the press clippings from the players, the coaches, head coach Jonathan Smith. We're going to talk about those in a hot second. But first, you need to talk your ears off about Monopoly Go. That is right. We've all been there either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win, and that's when you got to dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much money from my friends as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit bubble game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a Monopoly game you love, but even better, on your phone, anytime, with tons of new twists, including leaderboards, and you can compare your progress to your buddies. And there's so much to do, like play on countless different Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt, smash their landmarks with a wrecking ball, and charge other players rent for your iconic properties or if you're actually a friendly person you can work with your friends to crack open community chests in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard so get back out there put on your game face and download monopoly go right now for free on the app store or google play now let's drag him back on here it's mike jones one third of can't read can't write and hey do you know what the sun is coming out this segment we're, we're gonna talk upbeat here maybe probably i'll let you decide this mike but as I said That's before the break, if it, I know a lot, a lot of show left. We'll see where this goes. Um, <laughs> we watch a lot of press clippings and press conferences, media scrums, however you want to tab them, because that's what you do when you create content for a college sports team in the middle of April. You watch everything and you try to get anything you can. With that said, of everything that you've listened to, whether it's the last 24 hours, because Jonathan Smith did speak to the media very recently, or something in the last week or so, what is the best thing that you have heard? Something that's perked your ears, arched your eyebrows, gotten you a little excited for this team in the offseason, Mike? That's a that's a good question. Uh, or is I, I it nothing? Say... Is it nothing? <laughs> yeah, I, I will say there, there's there's a couple of things I've noticed. First, the players in particular that they've they brought out. Um, I'll provide one comment and, and one compliment. First of all, they are incredibly affable interviews oh, yeah. and, and, and give without digging too hard on the previous staff have provided some seemingly meaningful context on the differences in culture between the previous staff or the previous team maybe is a better way of saying it. Cause there's a lot sure. of kids who were recruited by the previous staff. And 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 what's happening right now in the locker room, they they're also good football guys in that they don't disclose a lot. Uh, in fact, yeah. I think one player was asked about where he was injured and refused to answer that <laughs> like a year ago, <laughs> like refused <laughs> to answer the question. Um, so I I will say it the the sincerity with which they talk about the culture in the building yeah that seems very real to me uh and so it, that's not an x's and o's thing that's not a who's playing best but there there seems to be a genuine enthusiasm for building something that is team based um yeah. and and so that's really encouraging and it like that goes down to the the transfers i it, I didn't realize Jordan Turner, the Wisconsin transfer, um, grew up a Michigan State fan and ended up not coming we here because we were the last to offer him. Good call, like, guys. Yeah, I think nice. <laughs> Dan, Dan, I think that was a D'Antonio decision, though. Like I last to offer, right on the cusp. Yeah, I think so. He talked about dreaming of. He went here for camps and dreaming of being able to show the picture from. And so, anyway. I, you know, it's this isn't a real thing, but they seem to have some high quality dudes in leadership positions right now. Mm -hmm. 
the the other thing that I'll just say is that the from an the way they talk about coaches as educators and the way the coaches talk to the media about real things is a net positive above the previous staff. Um, I wish the press was better about not just asking, Hey, what's different guys. Uh, there's a lot of, sure. that. uh, yeah. I think uh, you had Maxwell on and he referenced nearly the same. <laughs> it is uh, very frustrating. Could have had him going for like, 15 or 20 straight minutes. No, I, I got to shout out Stephen Brooks of 24 seven sports because in those scrubs and look like there are some guys that have like good questions. Don't get me wrong. Just cause I'm pulling Steven out. Doesn't mean that the rest are trash or garbage, but like Stephen Brooks always delivers great questions, like actual football things that really truly matter or history and a coach that is genuine. It's not just like, <laughs> Hey, you guys having fun out there. Right. What do you think? What do you, what do you think they're going to say? Like, <laughs> Of course they are. And if you're talking to a coach, they're certainly having fun. They just maximize their salary probably by at least 33%. Right. They're probably having a blast doing whatever they're doing right now. Yeah. So, no, it's nice to actually get, like, legitimate questions there. And obviously, look, I mean, I'm just being an armchair quarterback. I'm not in these scrums. I'm not credentialed media. Like, I'm just, you know, just taking right. these notes from the outside. But like you said, um, the, hey, how is it different than last year? Question gets a little old. Maybe the fifty seventh time you heard it, I don't know. And it's, so, it's not uh, so much the first question; <laughs> it's the lack of follow up, right? Like, okay, do, what? Whatever. That's not the point. It, to to you, answer your question, uh, what has me happy is that there seems to be like legit sustained enthusiasm, quality leadership, yeah. and a a. I don't recall watching any of the previous um uh staff's press conferences or the the you know the scrums with the players the the emphasis on the way things are being taught seems a lot more up here this time around okay. like they seem to like the coaching in a different way than they did under the yeah. previous staff so yeah, and a few different defensive players have talked about it too. Like, I know Chris Bogle has said, like, last year the defense just felt pretty stiff, which, like, that's probably as candid of a quote as you're going to get on the last half from any yeah. player. And even then, like, great. Uh, yeah, and I don't even know if that was as much as, like, ripping the last half as it was just being honest. <laughs> I mean, and just, you know, pretty blunt about it last year. But <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, it's a good crop of players, good crop of coaches. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, and this is just one snippet from Jonathan Smith. He spoke for, I think, 13 minutes today. Because we were going to do a segment like, hey, what's like the most concerning thing you've heard from the press conference and what's the best thing you've heard? So my most concerning thing was going to be last week and Brian Langer talked about the first scrimmage is like he, he, he talked about how they wouldn't stop putting the ball on the floor, like fumbling the ball, turning the ball over, which um, I just had shades that first COVID game against Rutgers in the Mel Tucker era. And I think it was like <laughs> seven turnovers. I'm like, great, let's just run that back for the first game of the year and like then, you know, rationality sets and I realize we're still months away from the first game and it's probably not going to be correlated. But um, Jonathan Smith did say that in the second scrimmage they just recently had, he didn't remember a single turnover or, you know, putting the ball on the floor once. So just the fact that there was some emphasis on ball security. I know that's so simple. I know it's so basic, but uh, excuse me for being a little bit uh, anal about that considering what happened last year where even the small basic stuff just kind of went out the window and it just didn't really uh, fully ingrain itself in the MSU DNA the last few years. So just something as simple as that. God, I'm just, I'm just like just the, the dumbest little moth flying into whatever light that these guys are giving me sometimes, you know, <laughs> I just, uh, here I am. Here I am. I'm with you. Uh, I'll, I will take, uh, I'll take some ball security. Uh, if we're on worst things said though, it, it was Lindgren Please. talking about outside zone run. Didn't like, feel great. Like, yeah. That feels like maybe a personnel <laughs> issue that, that, or at minimum a, Hey, it's going to take, cause it listeners, you all know, uh, it takes offensive line takes the longest to develop generally. Yeah. You switch the entire yeah. scheme and the the athletic attributes you may be looking for in an offensive lineman. There could be a, a real tape delay on 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 getting sure. that built in. And I I don't know that I can deal with 
another year of not being able to run the ball. And I think Lindgren and co ran what a 60, 40 split run heavy um, while they were at Oregon state. Yeah. They were always like in the upper half, if not the upper quarter um, for that split. So welcoming to see. If it yeah. It, excited about it, but like, it's, it's also worth remembering Jonathan Smith won one game his first year or three, his first year. It was tough. It, you could count it on one hand and you didn't need a lot of fingers for it. That, that's for sure. Um, it was, it was minimal, yeah. but yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I'm actually not that pessimistic. I, I promise. Dear listener, I know, like, right. I, actually I think know we, this, but I'm just, these are things that you, sh- it, you, they say these things and you, they don't say much, but mm-hmm. that was a concern. No, I'm right with you too, because like overall, like I am optimistic this off season, but like, yeah, I, we're, we're talking about the offensive line this much. Maybe it just has a way to check ourselves here to, you know, maybe not out ourselves as complete homers. And I, unfortunately, Mike is just the person that was dragged on here to attach his name to this Mopey of a show here. Uh, speaking of Mopey, Hey, you want to talk basketball here in a little bit, Mike? Is that, is that fit your need? Because I need to know if I'm in a vacuum chamber of just negativity here, or if the off season is really That's good. as dreadful as it seems. Uh, but first, you talk your ears off about Yahoo finance. That is right. This show is sponsored by my, by Yahoo finance. One of the apps that I have been using very recently when it comes to your financial future, You think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can, and now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses. It's Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking to get that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are number one in finance, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analysis ratings, and independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. With a community of over 90 million users for each month, their real strength is helping you find your way to financial success. Yahoo Finance is where it's at. So for com- comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. Again, that is yahoofinance.com. That is yahoofinance.com. All right. So whenever we've been talking Michigan State basketball offseason here, I've kind of said this has been underwhelming. Not a lot of names have been called. Frankie Fiddler visited. That's neat. Javon Hadley, you had a nice little call with, but it's been a very quiet offseason, and I would be lying to you if I said that. I wasn't looking across the bridge and seeing what's going on in Indiana, seeing what's going on at Ohio State, Illinois, other Big Ten programs, just having their fun. So, Mike, am I just being a little too down? Like, I don't know. Like, do you match this negativity? Do you find yourself being a little dejected about this offseason, or where are you at with Michigan State basketball? Because um, I don't want to just be a vocal minority and just Mr. Debbie Downer, despite what we've done the last 23 minutes here. I thought you were saying you were looking across the bridge as in you were thinking about jumping over the other side, uh, because give me a week, give me another week for that. Um, Frankie Fiddler goes back to Omaha and yeah, just, just mark me down for that. (laughs) Bro. If, if, if Frankie Fiddler goes back to Omaha, if we lose him to Omaha, I actually, you know what? I'm going to take that as push because it, hear me out. You didn't lose because Wisconsin and Creighton also and Nebraska lost that too, right? Like that's a yeah, push. Is it, it though? Like push me off a bridge. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. kind of push I'm looking for. It's not but to be extreme. I, uh, <laughs> but maybe, uh, but the, uh, <laughs> I, I I think the in vogue sort of theory right now is that Tom is waiting until the portal closes. Okay. Okay. To make moves because then the roster's stuck, which just feels disingenuous to me. It, it, like I, I I know you didn't posit this theory, but let, let's take a second on that. 
the man who openly yells at his players on national TV is not going to have a direct conversation about what he's going to do. That's not to say that he's not playing politics mm-hmm. and doing nuance. And, mm-hmm. But like, I don't think he's waiting until they're stuck to bring somebody in. So um, I'm five alarm concerned that it's not just that we're only seemingly really in on one wing. It's uh, how have you not gotten a center? I, I just, I can't, I can't with the, the nonsense of, you know, and I'm, I'm a Jackson Kohler and Carson Cooper hope believe, think they might be capable of contributing. And I know I'm in a minority on that, but like they haven't done it yet. How will, how, how have they're, you not they're, gotten they're a due. They're due. <laughs> But I, how did that, you that is all enough, of last truly. year and complain? He he admitted they didn't have anyone. How do you go through all of that and not do anything, Tom? I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm waiting to, to hear one good saying, argument for it. Yeah, that, that's all. Stop like, I'm, I'm waiting. Tom's a Hall of Fame coach. Sorry, I'm talking. Yeah, about I you. know. No, no, you're fine. You're fine because. Yeah, because I, I catch myself doing that all the time, too. It's like, oh, well, yeah, sure. Like, in Tom, we trust, I guess. But w- one thing that's absolutely driving me up a wall here is I have yet to even hear a strong argument as to why, like, a center hasn't even looked at yet. Like, I guess, oh, well, Booker can play the five. Well, he shouldn't. He should play the four, the position that he was brought here to play. I know that's crazy. Like, oh, but he's 6'11". Like, okay, and he's also 112 pounds and got bullied whenever he was, you know, in post defense. And I get that he's going to keep adding weight. He's still a far way away from even adding the weight, first of all, and then playing post-defense, second of all. And I get that he has blocks, but that's when he's doing help side defense coming from the other side of the lane, and it's it's just different. Like, yeah, just because he's tall doesn't mean he is a center. So I'm going to keep – I mean, okay, I don't keep hearing it, but, like, it's something that the vocal minority says. It's like, oh, well, Carson Cooper, Jackson Kohler will uh, develop. It's like, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> what? Based on what evidence? And that's nothing against these kids. That, that's that's on the staff. Who have they developed ever since Xavier Tillman? Like Dwayne Stevens ain't walking back to that door, guys. Like no one has gotten better on this team, specifically the big men. <laughs> like I'm just supposed to expect that a former zero star recruit that played an IMG's B team is supposed to have this great leap from sophomore to junior year. Look, great kid. He plays fine defense, but there's a reason that he was rated that coming out of high school, guys. I feel horrible saying that because, God, I love the kid. I hope the best for him. But And then there's Jackson Kohler. I get the out of the injury last year, and this is like the half-joke, half-serious line I keep saying. Did that injury knock off four inches off his height? Because at the end of the day, he's still a six foot eight center in the Big Ten. Didn't work with Thomas Kith here. I don't foresee it working out here. Please prove me. I'm begging you to prove me wrong, but I, that's what's also driving me up a wall about the center thing. I haven't even heard a good argument as to why they haven't because they were a decent center away last year from winning at least four more games, if not upwards of seven or eight. Sorry, that was a lot of ranting. That's, right. That took a lot of air up there. I'm just so mad. <laughs> uh, all right, hold on. Uh, let's... Uh... In fairness, Xavier Tillman was six seven. So yeah, uh but I also will say I trust Cohen Carr playing the five in some ways more than I do. I, you know <laughs> he blocked yeah, Filipowski twice. Uh you ain't wrong. <laughs> he could rebound, he could muddy up the well, he could at least muddy up the glass at least. <laughs> I, I um I'm with you. There's Booker shouldn't be playing the five. Uh, a that's not where he projects at the league, which isn't the only reason to play someone there. To be clear, but it is yeah sure. Reason. But it helps, uh, right? Just yeah, play and, guys in position. And, Just play guys in position. <laughs> and when is it, MSU's always had a better offense when they have a trailing four, which he can be. I don't know that he's a dude you yeah. want rim running. Um, but so I, I don't know, man, like I'm also bothered, frankly, that AJ Hogard has merely announced his name for the draft while maintaining his college eligibility. How are you not in the portal? AJ, has he forgotten? Be gone. (laughs) 
maybe maybe he maybe just forgot to announce maybe it. Maybe he or loves the field house that much. <laughs> yes. I, oh god, the owner of the field house, the only one having fun with MSU basketball the last few years. Um, it's <laughs> God. This is this is not the episode I wanted when I uh, asked you to come on, Mike. Sorry. Sorry. All right, let's... No, no, this is my fault. I, I'm the one asking the questions, for God's sakes. Uh, do you know what? To get us out the door here, I actually have a fun question that I got in the mailbag weeks ago. I'm talking, like, weeks ago. Like, I, I think Trump was wrapping up his first term here when when this was sent, and that's how long <laughs> I've been sitting on this one. This been, but I've been waiting for a fun guest to do this one with because as fun as it would be for me to just blab out the solo – I mean, I know we're over on time. Mr. Lockdown's going to have a very strongly written letter after this one, but whatever. Here we go. Nick C. writes in, love the show and wanted to ask after another short tournament for Michigan State basketball, whose last three years would you take? MSU football or basketball? He goes on to write, taking away the whole embarrassing way the Mel Tucker era ended off the field. The football team had an exciting 11-2 and season, followed by two huge disappointments. The basketball team had three uninspiring years of making the tournament and not much more. He goes on to say that he would go with football because of, well, you have Kenneth Walker. You had that great victory against Michigan and a New Year's Six Bowl win. Mike Jones, whose last three years are you taking if you could just do it all over again, as fun as both would be, football or basketball? Who asked this question? Nick C. I loved this question. I, I'm so sorry I took right, this, Nick, this long to get Nick to Nick C., me. you, Nick, Nick, <laughs> why Why would you do this? Why, like, Nick, you need to look in the mirror and say, why do I like hurting other people? Yeah, Nick, a question fit for this episode. Unwell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, oh, I mean, you're going to have a hard time convincing me to turn down Kenneth Walker, the, right. the single best football player I've ever seen. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, and the fact of the matter is that that team actually flirted with the standard that we have for Michigan State. Yeah. Tom Izzo has not flirted with the standard that we have for Michigan State, that he's set for Michigan State. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, you know, we can be, I think we can be transparent here that more people listen to um, football-related content than, than basketball-related content. But there is something... <laughs> There, the way that I can hate Michigan State basketball <laughs> is only because I, I only because I love it so much. Yes, there, there's no one who can hurt you in life more than a loved than a partner or a family member, and that and truly, <laughs> like so in a weird, in a really <laughs> abusive way. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I do take the last. I, I don't. <laughs> Nick, you're probably right, but I hate you and I hate your question. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. On Spartans. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. Love you. Love the question, but go go screw yourself. <laughs> 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 I gotta go with I, I gotta go with football just because like I, I just yeah, I'm just thinking of like who gave me more pop moments? And look, just in that one year, like you had the Peach Bowl win. Grant that's it, beat. Matt. That's it. I know. I know. The Michigan game was a lot of fun. <laughs> though you were on, like, that was a blast. Uh, the Nebraska game, even though I was 15 sheets to the wind, I had to watch the replay the following day. Oh, the Penn State. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's it's football going away for me, I think, because at least I smiled multiple times that year. Like, basketball? Sure, I smiled after the Marquette game. I think that was it. And, like, obviously, I get excited after all wins, but, like, I'm talking, like, the next level, like, celebration, pop yeah. the champagne. I'm like, yeah, what, Marquette? Baylor? A any anyone else? Uh, Tyson Walker hit that cool shot against Purdue. That was cool. Baylor was fun. Baylor was fun. And Baylor was fun. I, was Baylor fun, though, because it was kind of a must win to get back on the right side of the bubble in a December basketball game? Oh, this was this has been was... a great show. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Listen, oh. folks, uh, if you want more of this negativity and, and some laughs <laughs> as we cry, you can listen to Can't Be Can't We are not oh my God. always this negative. As I take my hat off to once yeah. again show the hairline that Michigan State has done to me, um, 
it's three years ago. I was, I was like right here. I was I was here ish, and now now look at me. I've aged like a president. It's just a, it's a Tom Izzo move. It's it's Tom Izzo. Yeah, that is what it is. But um, nevertheless, I will not stop talking about these guys. I will not stop watching them, even if the next three years turn out like the last three years. Unless Frankie Filler goes back to Omaha and does pick Michigan State, therefore I will not just be. Are you gonna be an Omaha fan? Anymore. Sure, go go herd or whatever they're called. Are they the herd? I, I don't know. Who, who cares? Go, go stakes. Locked on Omaha with Matt Sheehan. Locked on Omaha. Yeah, no. If no, honestly, if, if Frankie Fuller goes to Omaha, like this becomes a full time gymnastics podcast in the winter. Like that's that's just what that's just what we do for now on. We'll touch on women's basketball. Actually, funny enough, we're going to talk about women's basketball on tomorrow's show because Joel Weimer, assistant head coach, assistant head coach, assistant coach of the women's team, joins the show for a chat. So looking forward to that. So um, that Van Sloot pickup was huge. Uh yeah, because I want to talk. I want to talk about a program that's actually doing things in the offseason to better their roster so far. Like that's can that's I can I plant a seed for you on that? Please though? do. Like please. Dee Dee Hangerman leaving was surprising to me. Yeah, sure. And I don't know. I it, you you would expect you'd want to run back a senior level point guard, right? Like yeah, and so. I'm super curious is, and I don't think you're going to get an answer from a coach, but is this about turning the page to a new system or mm -hmm. did the AC buy a point guard from us? It, like that move after a, what you would consider to be a, under the circumstances, a very successful season to see her yeah, leave totally. was surprising to me. Yeah. Um, so anyway, like I, Robin Freilich seems like a great hire, super psyched. Oh, totally. This pickup in the portal is massive, but like, I'm curious about losing your senior point guard. Yeah. That yeah. Concern. I'm going to end a negative. <laughs> That's concerning. No, I see. I know I take that as a positive because we talk about the good things women's hoops is doing. So look at us go for your daily dose yeah. of vitamin D and rays of sunshine guys. It's Locked on Spartans. It's also the Can't Read, Can't Write podcast where you're guaranteed to smile in whatever car or cubicle or backyard that you're listening to this in. Join us tomorrow. <laughs> Surely it'll go better than this one. <laughs> <Appreciate> <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, Mike. No, you're, you're truly the best. Love all you guys at Can't Read, Can't Write. I love everyone that watches, listening. You guys are truly the best. Love you all. Go Green.